Well, good morning guys, my name's Daryl and welcome to the channel. We have a dud water pump. The only good thing about it is, here's one I prepared earlier. I knew I was pushing my luck. I have had a couple of little squeaks out of the water pump uh, over the last six months and it's like, yes, it is on its way out. And when I was last doing a shop at Rock Auto, I did purchase a new AC Delco pump. Uh, this comes with the gasket and everything. So we're good to go with regards to this. Um, it's not a huge job. Uh, it's just mainly removing and reinstalling. Uh, you do have to dump the coolant out of the radiator. While we're in there, I do have a new Mopar radiator to put in that I've had sitting here for the last three or four years. I know with the radiator, the radiator is an original radiator and I must be getting to the end of my luck with regards to it because the vehicle's, what, a 2005, 2006 build. So in 2022, I think I've had a fairly good run out of a plastic radiator. So we may dump that in there while we're there. Let's see how we go. But before we go there, the east coast of Australia has had some massive rainfall, like absolutely massive, over the past few weeks. And it's to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm just not going out there uh, and hope the house doesn't slip down the hill. Um, We've had what they've been terming as rain bombs and it's been like living in the tropics where it, it comes off and all of a sudden down it comes and it down, comes down hard for hours on end and the normal places that flood have flooded to record levels. Uh, the places that haven't flood have had some flooding. We've had landslips all over the place. There's a creek down in the valley um, I've been keeping an eye on, and it's, it's normally a fairly nondescript creek. We're at the upper tributaries of, of the creek, so it's, it's where it's basically starting. Um, but it was like a river. It was, it was huge. So I can only imagine what it's like to live in a flood prone area and just watch this stuff come up. The funny thing was we've got a bridge that they built over the Hawkesbury out at Windsor here. And it was supposed to be one of these bridges that never flooded. And it's the second time it's flooded in two years. <laughs> Gotta love politicians. But anyway, back to this, this isn't that hard a job. I'd say the hardest part is undoing the reverse thread nut that holds the uh, viscous fan on. So we're gonna start with that. And once we get that sorted, we're right to go. It's, it's just unbolting and putting stuff back on. I'm not going to take the fan belt off before we do that though. I have fairly good luck. There's, there's a tool that you can use for this. I don't have that tool. There's numerous ways people do this, undo this viscous fan nut. Um, you know, there's lots of hammers involved normally. For me, I've found the best way is leverage. So I've jammed uh, an adjustable wrench into my jack handle. Um, I find this is a leverage job more than a hitting job. Um, I leave the fan belt on. I generally use this scraper just behind the uh, water pump pulley. You don't want to put too much uh, strain on this because you don't want to bend that pulley. However, all we're wanting to do is stop the pulley turning as much as we can. But with the leverage of this, I find that it comes off pretty simple. So let's see how we go with that. And once we've got that done, uh, it's, it's a fairly simple job. Now with this, I find that if I put that behind the pulley, as such, put a bit of pressure on that, I can generally And I've got it. Now I'm just going to take this radiator shroud off, which I think there's four bolts that hold it on. Now before we take the fan belt off, let's just loosen the bolts on the water pump pulley. 
and now we can take the fan belt off. Draining the water. And with that, that's the disassembly done. So um, that's the water pump out. We've got to take off this hose, reinstall that, take off the lower radiator hose and um, clean up the face of the block and we're ready to bolt it all back in. Now, I've gone a little bit further than what I originally said with this, but I just figured I've got the parts in stock while we've got access to the front. Let's renew as much as the cooling system as we can. The only parts that won't be renewed this time are hooter core and hooter hoses. I do have all of those in stock. I just don't want to tear the dash out today. I've pulled all everything off the front of the block. I've cleaned up all the mating surfaces. We have a new thermostat housing. We've got a new thermostat. Um, we've got a new sensor. The sensors already have tape around them, so you just need to screw them in and they're right to go. For gaskets, I've got Philpro gaskets for both thermostat housing and water pump. These have a little raised section that um, conform to any irregularities on the block, which I don't think I have, but it's just a nice thing to have. Um, when I tend to shop at Rock Auto, I tend to just throw a couple of things in the cart every now and then that are fairly low price items like these, uh, so that when something does go wrong, we're right to go and I don't have to be waiting on parts. Um, the only non left hand drive parts that I've bought for this right hand drive vehicle are radiator hoses. I didn't know whether left hand drive and right hand drive were any different. However, these are McKay rubber hoses, so a Queensland company. I think I'd pick these up at my local super cheap auto to be honest, but they're the only right hand drive pieces in here. With, so with the radiator, the only difference between left hand drive and right hand drive Mopar radiators are the brackets that hold it on. There's four bolts either side, the bracket comes off, you put your old bracket back on and it's converted to a right hand drive radiator. Uh, the only thing I can see is slightly different is that they just move the positioning of the radiator to allow for the steering gear. So that radiator is now converted to a right hand drive radiator. Now with thermostats, the only thing that I can see to look at is there's a hole at the top of this Mopar one with an up uh, part on it. Um, so this is a replacement Mopar thermostat. It doesn't have that up piece, but this hole at the top, just put that to the top of the thermostat housing and um, let's just put it all back together again and hopefully it'll all work.
So that's everything back together. We just need to fill it up full of coolant, uh, run it, make sure there's no air bubbles in the system, and um, check everything over that it's okay, but it should be fine. Uh, it's gone together quite, quite simply. It's taken me a few hours. I've taken my time with it. Um, but it's a fairly simple job, but hopefully we'll get another 200,000 Ks out of the cooling system on this. If you're watching, these gadgets here are really good. Um, just something I picked up off eBay. They come with numerous fittings for your radiator uh, and you can actually close the system off bring it up to temp and then open it up just, and it'll just suck in what um, what coolant that it can. Quite a good little gadget and they're cheap as on eBay. So uh, recommend these things. So this is all back together again. As I said, the complete cooling system now is replaced on this with new parts and the only parts that uh, the original parts are the heater core and the heater hoses and I do have those there and that's on my to-do list I know I keep putting it off but um, I will get it done um, I did drive this to work yesterday I did notice when I was sitting in heavy traffic the temperature gauge fluctuating ever so smallly and it should just sit there rock solid so this morning I've put this on a slope with the nose up I've taken off the radiator cap I've run it up to temp so the uh, thermostat opens and then I've given the top radiator hose a bit of a squeeze and I did notice that uh, I got a few little air bubbles out of it so maybe that's what it was I did uh, button it all back up again and let it run for 15 minutes and it looks as though it's rock solid so Possibly there was a little bit of air in the system um, and it's worthwhile just nutting down those issues because the air in the system can cause overheating if you just leave it there. Um, apart from that, I've got to get a new cap for the overflow bottle, uh, but she looks pretty good. So that's it for today guys. It has been a long episode, but there was a lot to uh, squeeze in and I figure things like this are a good reference piece for people to come back to at a later date. So if you've enjoyed it, think about subscribing to the channel. That's it for today guys and we'll see you next time. Bye now.